Hi everyone. Uh, I play in a three-piece uh, bass, guitar and drums. Um, often we have to do songs with uh, keyboard parts in as well, so I have to fill it out. Um, there's one song which has uh, a keyboard solo which has this kind of arpeggiated pattern in it. Um, and I thought it'd be interesting to talk about how I approach that. Um, I can't, well I don't want to actually play the solo because of copyright issues and stuff like that, but I can play something similar. Um, let me do it now. <laughs> It's a really common pattern, it's a really common shape. It's used a lot in classical music as well, especially down in the bass. So, um, uh, you hear that all over the place. It's actually got a name, it's called an Alberti bass. Those four, uh, those, that group of notes together, played in that way. Um, anyway. So, how do I approach this on the guitar? Well, the big problem was string damping for me. Uh, let me play it to you when I don't dampen the strings at all. This is what it sounds like. So, as you can see, you've really got to focus on the string damping. And when I played it, I do it all with my left hand. The left hand's handling all of the string damping, the right hand's just hitting the notes. Um, and the way I, I do this is by uh, when I fret the note, I make sure I'm damping the previous note. Uh, so, what I'm doing here, for example, the first, first pattern is this. So, I'm holding on to that E string on the 12th fret all the time and then uh, fretting with my third finger on the 14th fret of the G string and by, by fretting that G I'm also damping the E string and then similarly by fretting the 13th fret on the B string I'm damping the E as well so I'm making sure that I'm damping as well as playing the note as well as pressing down to break the note and the easiest way to practice this, I found, was actually to play both notes together when you're first learning this, to get your finger position just right. So, instead of it, what I would do is I'd play both strings at the same time. And what I actually want to do is end up, find a position where I just hear that A note, and I don't hear any of the E, the E's damp, dampened. And if you go too far, then you'll fret. So that's how I, I kind of learned where to put my fingers for this. And then similarly, on the E arpeggio, um, um, I was doing two things. One, one is when again when I reach down for that G sharp on the G string, so that's on the thirteenth fret of the G string. And flatten my finger a little bit. So I'm dampening the E string. Not too much, so I fret it. And then the B is the next note. Now. The problem, I can play the B in two places. If I played it on the 12th fret of the B string, then I couldn't dampen the E string. So what I'm doing is I'm reaching out to what is that? That's the 16th fret on the G string with my little finger. And that lets me flatten that and that's killing the, the E. So that's what I'm doing there. So that's, that's what I'm doing with my left hand. Uh, the right hand, well, uh, I don't know about alternate picking that. That would be really impressive if someone could do that. I'd love to see someone doing that. Uh, if you use a pick, I guess you could hybrid pick it. Um, so. Um, what I'm doing is I'm doing my usual tremolo pattern. So it's thumb. 
third finger playing the E, so second finger playing the B, first finger playing the E again. It's going to feel a bit awkward if you're not used to doing this, this kind of movement. You may prefer to do sort of thumb on the G string, third, then first, and then second. A lot of people find that more comfortable for them, but I, I prefer to stay with the, the pattern that I've built up over the years. So. And that's it. Simple as that.